So we got some shy girl. Oh, look at her pushing out the chest and everything. They're with their plates, guys. They're waiting for Palau. I'm just going to show you guys what we're making tonight. These guys are all lined up with their plates here, ready to go. We got Kiana hiding. She just had dental surgery, so her face is all swollen. She's yeah. hiding. <laughs> Say hi, guys. Hi. We got Montana and we've got Natasha. Natasha. One of a twin. I never remember the name. <laughs> but here we go, guys. This is the Palau we're going to be making tonight. Hey guys, what we got here? We got some chicken pilau on the stove. It's been cooking now. Well, let's just see. It's got about 15 minutes more to go to burn off all this liquid. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. I hope you guys are enjoying the recipe, guys. I asked you guys on Facebook earlier today if you guys wanted me to share this video with you guys on making chicken pilau. And there was a lot of positive responses. So here we go, guys. Chicken pilau. Remember, if you're watching this video on YouTube, to give me the thumbs up leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel directly above you'll see the subscribe button click on subscribe what this does it gives you first views of all the videos and all of my updates that I post to the YouTube channel here so guys here we go um, chicken pilau it's one of those um, rice dishes with uh, everything's in the pot here basically but you guys are gonna love this one. We're gonna give it a we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna give it another 15 minutes to cook, and then we'll start eating. The first step in the pilau and making this chicken pilau is to marinate the chicken because we need to allow this to sit and marinate for at least an hour. A couple hours would be good. Overnight, even better. But not everyone <laughs> have all that time on their hands, so an hour at least. So what I have here is one pound and um, four pounds of chicken. Where did I get one pound from? Anyways, four pounds of chicken um, that I cut up into pieces. I removed most of the skin, most of the fat, and I washed it. I allowed it to soak first in a couple tablespoons of lemon juice. If you don't have lemon juice, you can use lime juice or vinegar. Then I rinsed it all off with water and I drained it properly. Now for seasoning this, what we're gonna do, and you're gonna, you're probably gonna think I'm using a lot of salt here. However, remember we're going to be adding rice to this, so um, in cooking the rice we won't be adding any more salt. So the first thing I'm going to do is put about a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons of salt. It may seem like a lot guys, but trust me on this one. Then I'm going to hit him a couple splashes of the Lee and Perrin's Worcester sauce. It's pretty much the same um, procedure as seasoning the chicken as when we did um, the earlier video for stew chicken so we got the Worcestershire sauce can never pronounce that I'm just gonna I, I've got some um, some ginger here some pureed ginger a little bit more convenient for me but if you guys have the fresh stuff by all means I'm just gonna use about a half a teaspoon of that ginger I'm also gonna get some fresh ground black pepper in there that's gonna be about a quarter of a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. I've got some ketchup, about a tablespoon of the ketchup. And here are the, the other ingredients that we're going to be adding, guys. Here I've got one chopped up tomato, it was a medium sized tomato, a couple um, scallions that I chopped up, half of a habanero pepper. Again, the heat level is all dependent on how much you can withstand, but half of a habanero pepper works for me. You got scotch bonnet, whatever sort of hot pepper you like. I've chopped up three cloves of garlic, a medium onion, as well as some cilantro. I've got a couple tablespoons of cilantro. Now here's the thing, guys. In the Caribbean, you probably see them use um, flat leaf thyme, uh, parsley it, and again this all depends on what you like it's all about your preference but these are all going to go into here as well and finally I've got some uh, some dry thyme that I pretty much did myself or my dad did and I'm just going to put about about half a teaspoon of dried thyme in there if you've got fresh thyme by all means, use fresh thyme. 
fresh thyme is fresh ingredients is always so much better now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna stir this all around I'm gonna massage all the pieces of meat make sure everything gets coated with the all the different herbs and tomato and onion and everything else and let that sit for about an hour the second step here we're just gonna run through the other ingredients for making the pilau um, first off I've got some vegetable oil here we're gonna need about two tablespoons of vegetable oil I like using vegetable oil simply because it has a higher heat um, it can higher withstand higher heat in cooking couple cups here of beautiful brown rice um, power boil brown rice it's my preference um, if you're using white rice it will cook faster so you will have to adjust your cooking time and the amount of liquid that you use but in our case we're using this beautiful brown rice I've got a couple carrots here if you have one large carrot perfect some coconut milk we're gonna need about a cup of coconut milk I've got a can here of pigeon peas I'm giving Mr. Gouda some good publicity here Mr. Gouda's, whoever's watching this, contact me for sponsoring this video, please. <laughs> uh, some pigeon peas, if you're using fresh pigeon peas, probably need about a cup and a half. And I envy you if you do have um, fresh uh, shell pigeon peas. Brown sugar, guys, this is how we're going to brown everything and caramelize it. We're probably going to use, um, it's a bit lumpy there, but I'm going to break that up. Um, we're going to use about a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar. And to give it a little extra kick, I've got some golden ray butter. Now this is something you probably can't find in North America. No worries. Your pilau will be great even without it. But with it, you have that extra kick, right guys? It's one of those rich, dark um, butters that's uh, very salty. In, in the Caribbean, it's known as salt butter. This is going to give it a nice kick, guys. So these are the ingredients. We're also going to need some water. I'm guessing we're going to need about two cups of water, but later on in the video I'll explain um, exactly how much water you'll need but at this point we're gonna say two cups of water let's get cooking guys I've got a big pan here and the meat has been marinating for about an hour now guys I've got a fairly big deep pan here um, on a medium high heat with two tablespoons of oil vegetable oil in there just gonna move it around a bit just to make sure all the entire bottom of the pan is coated in there and then I'm going to add the brown sugar to the pot. As in the stew chicken video that I shared with you guys, the whole idea here is to keep moving around the sugar until it starts foaming, it's going to go frothy, it's going to start changing color from a, a light brown to a golden brown to a dark brown. And just before it goes um, black or very very dark we're gonna start adding the pieces of chicken to it now when working with the sugar here guys when stirring it around use a dry spoon a wet spoon and you're asking for trouble there will be splattering and chances are you will get burned the sugar started to melt now and you're gonna see it start to go foamy it, it will become a bit smoky in here so if you gotta open up your kitchen window turn on the fan over your stove please do so or it will become very smoky in here and as you guys can see the edges here where the higher heat is it is starting to go that rich golden brown we're going to go beyond golden brown so we're going to allow it to froth to foam up to do its thing and just keep moving it around now the other thing I should mention guys use a spoon with a long handle this one doesn't have a long handle but please do use a spoon with a long handle because when we add the pieces of chicken to this remember it's going to be wet it's going to be moist so it will cause splattering now where did where it's at right here guys it's all about timing start adding your pieces of seasoned chicken to the pot give it a quick stir And keep adding the rest of it. Don't worry about all the marinade, the onions, the tomato, everything. All of that is going in here. So now I have all the chicken in there. I'm just going to give it a good stir to try and pick up all of that golden richness 
that we created in browning in, in melting the sugar in, in that sort of caramel way. And that's it guys. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the lid on there, reduce the heat to about a medium heat and allow it to cook for about 15 minutes or so. The whole idea is going to release a ton of juices, but that's cool. We're trying to cook this and then we're going to burn off all of that liquid. The chicken has been cooking now for about 10 minutes. And as you can see, it's, it's let out quite a bit of juices, it's all natural juices. So we're going to let that cook for another 5 minutes or so and then we're going to remove the lid and crank up the heat to burn it all off, to brown the chicken and to get that rich base that we're looking for. So the rice, when we add the rice, is going to have that beautiful brown color that pilau is supposed to have. I'm just going to put the lid back on and allow that to cook for another 5 minutes or so. In the same bowl that we marinated the chicken, now we want to pick up all that onion and, and garlic and tomatoes, anything that was left back. What I did was, I'm just going to move the handle, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the pigeon peas here. And what I did was, I opened the can, drained it, rinsed it off with cold water, just because I don't like the sort of, <coughs> excuse me, I don't like the sort of briny sort of liquid that it is packaged in. Now remember if you're using fresh pigeon peas. Just give it a rinse and put it on here. I've also chopped up the two small carrots that I had. So everything here is waiting to go. It's been cooking now for 15 minutes. What I did, I removed the lid, turned up the heat, and I'm just trying to burn off all that liquid. You're going to see a rich sort of caramel color on the bottom. Try to use that sauce, a sort of thick sauce, to coat, to coat all the pieces of chicken. Now remember, it's key here that we burn off all that liquid until we see a sort of um, oily finish on the bottom. After which, I'm gonna add the, the pigeon peas, carrots, and, and everything else that's in the bowl that we marinated the chicken into the pot, give it a good stir, and then I'm gonna add one cup of water. On high heat, it took about five minutes to burn off all the liquid from the pot. On the bottom, there's a rich caramel sauce, oily sauce on the bottom here. And that's exactly what we're looking for. It's going to seem as though it stained up your pan, but trust me, it didn't. What I forgot to mention to you guys, I used a four pound chicken in here. So I've got white meat, dark meat, the chicken wings, everything in here. But if dark meat is not your thing and you just want to use chicken breast in here, by all means do so. If you don't want to use chicken breast, by all means it's all your choice. So all I'm doing now guys in the same bowl that we had all that marinade and don't worry about cross contamination and all that other jazz. This is going to cook for another 45 minutes so don't worry about that. Everything's going to get cooked. And all I'm doing is adding everything to the pot here. And then I'm gonna give it a good stir. I hope I didn't just bust my <laughs> my bowl there. But I'm gonna give it a good stir. Just again to deglaze the pan and to pick up some of those beautiful caramel flavors that we have on the bottom. Don't worry about this being sweet. I should warn you guys. You're probably watching this and thinking, oh my gosh, he's using all that sugar. It's gonna be sweet, but trust me, it will not be sweet. With the salt, the pepper, the herbs, everything we added, it will not be sweet. Now all I'm gonna do here is add a cup of water, bring that up to a boil, and in the meanwhile, I'm gonna show you guys how to wash the rice and get it ready for uh, adding it to here. I'll just quickly show you guys how to wash the rice because we gotta take out all of that grit, all that sort of white impurities that's um, in the rice. So in a bowl here, what I have, the two cups of rice, and I'm just gonna fill it up with water. Now as it fills, I'm using my hands, and, and you gotta get involved when you're cooking, guys. Using your hands, you're just gonna get it and rub it against each other in the water. Now if you notice, I'm just gonna move the tap over. Notice how white the water is getting, how cloudy uh, color it is. We want to get rid of that. So all I'm going to do is continue doing this. Then I'm going to drain it. 
and repeat that process until the water runs clear. The chicken has come up to a boil now, if you guys remember it, we added that cup of water, it's boiling now. I've washed the rice here as I showed you earlier there in the earlier clip. It took me, I think, four tries of the repeated process I showed you to get it to run clear. I drained out all of the water from it and I'm just going to add it to the pot now. And give the pot a stir. Try to get the liquid above the rice. So I'm just going to mix everything in here. Next up, I'm going to add the coconut milk. And then I'm going to add another cup of water. This is a cup and a half of water we're going to add. So in total, we're looking at two and a half cups of water, as well as the cup of coconut milk. All we're going to do now, guys, is bring this up to a boil. I'm going to put the lid on there. Bring that up to a boil, and then we're going to reduce it to a very, very gentle simmer. And we're going to stir occasionally. Typically, this takes anywhere from uh, 30 minutes now to for the rice to cook. But depending on the type of brown rice you use, it may cook a little bit earlier, but chances are it may take a little bit longer. So anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes to allow this to cook all the way through. So it's up to a rolling boil now, guys. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn the heat down and let that simmer. We want it to the gentle simmer because we don't want to lose all that liquid before the rice cooks. If you notice you're losing all your liquid, add another cup of hot water to it or a half a cup of water just so you have enough liquid in there to fully cook the rice. Now, I like my peel out to be grainy. A lot of people like it to be um, soft and mushy and, and wet or moist, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to show you as best as I can here how to get it to be grainy but fully cooked. Guys, it's been cooking now here for about 15-20 minutes. You can see the grains of rice plumping up. The pot is looking a lot fuller and everything else. And now what I'm going to do I have the salted butter or the um, or golden ray as it's called. I'm just going to melt that all the way through and let those flavors um, meld, uh, join the rest of the gang here in the pot. If you don't have the salt butter, the golden ray, obviously you can do without it, but it gives it that extra kick. Now, if it's not dark for you, like if you like your pillow a bit darker, what you can do is use a little bit of gravy browning, the Caribbean style of gravy browning. And again, I'm giving Mr. Gouda's here another props. Guys, for Mr. Gouda's, give me a call. Add about half a teaspoon of that uh, Caribbean style gravy browning um, to the pot. But here I'm going to put the lid back on, let it go on simmering here for another 10, 15, maybe about another 15 minutes or so until all the liquid dries up and the rice green, the rice everything is fully cooked. It's been cooking now for about half an hour after I've added the rice um, to the pot. So um, after we added the rice, remember we brought the heat up to a boil, brought it back down to a gentle simmer. We've been stirring it. We've added the golden ray margarine if we had it. And um, it's been about half an hour now. So here we go, guys. It's nice, the rice grains are nice and plump. You can see the peas, you can see the pieces of chicken. Most of my liquid, I'm guessing 95% of my liquid is gone now. So all I'm doing now is burning off that extra liquid because you want this to be dry, somewhat dry, but moist, as well as grainy. Now if you want this to be beyond grainy, you want it to cook a bit softer, certainly do so you can add a little bit more water or continue cooking it on a very low heat until your water dries up. But this is it guys, pilau, chicken pilau. You can use beef, you can use, well I guess you can use just about any meat that you like. But chicken pilau is my favorite. It's gotta be chicken pilau. Whenever we go into the beach, this used to be the dish uh, my mom would pack in the uh, cooler, well, in the hot container for us to eat at the beach. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com guys. Thank you so much for 
allowing me to show you for joining me in my kitchen here making chicken peel out tonight I do hope you try the recipe I'll post a direct link in the description of the video here to the actual recipe on caribbeanpot.com guys remember before you go click on subscribe above leave me your questions and comments below and hey give me a thumbs up have a great night guys